Welcome back to the fifth video in the mini series in developing problem solving strategies for using mass moles and molecules conversion factors. In this video, we're going to look at a problem that's requiring us to move from individual numbers of atoms, in this case 69 carbon monoxide molecules, to the mass of this relatively small quantity of carbon monoxide molecules. So we need to go from number of atoms to mass. So our first step, step one here, is to essentially write out what we need to do. We're going to be starting off with numbers of atoms, numbers of you know, CO molecules. All right. We then need to figure out some sort of way to go from numbers of molecules to mass. To accomplish this, we're going to come over to our list of conversion factors. But just as we saw in the previous video, we're going to run into a problem. There are no single conversion factors that allow us to move from numbers of atoms directly into the mass of that sample. Right? So what we're going to have to do is essentially carry out, as we did in the previous video, a series of conversions that accomplish this task. So if we're starting off with number of molecules, we do have a conversion factor, namely Avogadro's number, that allows us to convert from numbers of CO2 molecules to moles. So we've got moles of CO. Okay? And we can use Avogadro's number, I'll write it in here, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, So we've got Avogadro's number here. That will get us to moles of CO. Now, at the end of the day, we want mass. Well, once we're in units of moles, we can use our molar mass conversion factor to go from moles of that substance to the mass. We're going to use orange here. We're going to use our molar mass, and we're going to end up with grams of CO at the end of the day. And we're going to need our molar mass. So looking at the periodic table, determining what the mass is, molar mass of carbon, molar mass of oxygen, adding both those together, you should find that one mole of carbon monoxide equals 28.01 grams of carbon monoxide. So armed with both the molar mass and Avogadro's number, we're now all set for carrying out the final calculation. So in our final step here, we're going to start off with the actual numerical value, 69 CO, okay, CO molecules. Now, we're going to use Avogadro's number to convert that to moles. So we're going to end up dividing here by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd all right, CO molecules. All right. And I put that Avogadro's number in the denominator so that my CO molecules unit cancels out, and I will be left with units of one mole of CO. Once we have one mole of CO, we can then use our molar mass conversion factor that we just determined, which is 28.01 grams of CO is equal to, actually got my wrong color here, Let's get that color coded properly, there we go, 28.01 grams of CO, perfect, All right, and that's going to be equal to one mole of CO. So now CO molecules cancels out with CO molecules down here, we're left with units of C moles of CO, multiplying by the molar mass cancels out the units of moles of CO and leaves us with units of grams of CO. So if you carry this out, you should obtain a final answer uh, that's roughly 3.209 times 10 to the 21st. And I'm going to write this down here. All right? So our final answer for this is going to be 3.209 times 10 to the minus 21 grams of CO. So quick note on this. 
I want you to ask yourself, why is it that I have, I'm reporting four significant figures in my final answer if my initial number only had two numbers here? Pause the video for a second. I want you to think about that. The reason being is because when we're counting out molecules here, this is actually an exact quantity. Okay? So if I'm giving you discrete objects here, in this case molecules of CO, and I'm telling you there are 69 of them, that means there are exactly 69 of these molecules. There's no uh, you know, loss of precision. Basically, we could write it down as 69.00.000000, infinite number of zeros. This is an exact number. Therefore, this initial value is never going to limit us in terms of the number of significant figures we're reporting in the final answer. The measured quantity in this case is actually going to be that molar mass. When we reported our molar mass for carbon monoxide, using whatever periodic table we were given at the time, we found a mass that has 28.01, four significant figures in it. As a result, that four significant figures is actually what determined the number of significant figures in our final answer.